Advanced Accounting to Intercompany Indebtedness. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email and phone. The source for this video was the Advanced Accounting text from McGraw-Hill. And you'll find related videos, Intermediate Accounting 3 through 6. On our prior video, we talked about indirect intercompany debt between two affiliates. This video deals with direct intercompany debt. In our example, Entity A, in the first bullet point, issues debt to Entity B and receives cash. So Entity A has a bond payable. They get cash from Entity B. The second bullet point, debt is an investment. Why did B buy A's debt? Well, you see in the second sentence that B earns interest income on the debt and is repaid principal at maturity. So they're doing it as an investment. So what's the benefit for A and B to do business this way? Well, the first thing is, is that B, the entity who has the extra cash, is able to get a higher earning level with their extra cash. Rather than letting it sit there and earn very little, they go out and they buy an investment from B, from A. The second point, the lending affiliate B knows the credit risk of A because they're both owned by the same parent company. They understand each other, they know each other, they know each other's history. So A is a known credit risk to B. And finally, A, the entity that's borrowing the money, is probably able to get better lending terms from an affiliate of the same company. Lower interest rate, longer payback period, less restrictive loan covenant. We've had one video, Consolidation 1, at least so far, where we talked about consolidation of A and B and looking at them as if they're one entity. And just as we had in the prior video, we're going to have the bond issued at a discount. And we know that the issuer A has an additional expense for issuing that bond at a discount. That was issued at a discount to entice a buyer to buy the debt. And Entity B, who's the buyer, is going to have additional income because that discount will be amortized and go into income. But unlike the prior video, we will not have, we will not have a gain or loss calculation. Because the additional expense for Entity A for issuing the debt at a discount is equal to the additional income to Entity B. What I've jumped over to now is Excel. Here it says enter direct intercompany debt, where a company called Sparrow buys the debt of Eagle Corporation, similar to what we saw on the spreadsheet on the prior video. Both companies are part of the same parent. And the result is in blue that all activity eliminates in consolidation when we combine these and look at them as if they're one company. So if we look at the first journal entry, Eagle issues a 20-year, half-million-dollar bond payable to Sparrow for $423,000. They get cash of $423,000. They have a liability of $500,000. And the difference between those two is the discount on the bond payable. On Sparrow's books, the buyer, Sparrow buys Eagle's bond as an investment. They have an asset called investment in Eagle bond for the par amount, $500,000. They only pay 423000 and therefore they have a discount of 77000 also. You'll note that that Eagle's discount is a debit and that Sparrow's discount is a credit. Moving down a little farther, we have to amortize the discount for both companies. So for Eagle, that discount on bond payable is for both companies is the 77000 divided by 20 years, 77,000 divided by a 20 year life to get $3,850 a year. This should say 1231-2010 by the way. So we're going to amortize that and that amount gets credited to reduce the discount on bond payable for Eagle and the debit becomes amortization expense. So we will gradually take all of the discount out of the debit side and it will become all expense on Eagle's books. 
That's what we had to do to entice a buyer to buy our bond was to offer it at a discount and get less than 500000 Sparrow on their books started with a credit in the discounted bond payable. They will gradually debit that account and move it into a credit amortization income. So Eagle, the issuer, has an amortization expense. Sparrow, the buyer, has income. Moving on to our next Excel sheet, we see how do the financials look in consolidation at 1231 and that should be 2010 when we combine the entities. On the asset side, we have Sparrow's investment in Eagle Debt at half a million dollars reduced by the discount that they paid. On the liability side, we have that bond payable for Eagle of a half a million reduced by the discount on their books. That, so this is the balance sheet section. On the income statement section, Eagle, the issuer, is paying 12% interest on half a million dollars. So this should be 60000 So the interest expense to Eagle is equal to the interest income for Sparrow, and I'm changing these numbers from the prior example that we had in the prior video. So those two numbers offset income to one, the expense to the other. The amortization of the discount, one year's worth we got from the prior page, Sparrow has income from the amortization, that's credit. Eagle has expense from the amortization, that's a debit. And what we see is, is that once we make all these adjustments, the entire activity is eliminated when we consolidate the two entities. That's the end of Advanced Accounting 2. You'll find Essential Topics in Management Accounting, a three-hour course that we do through GoToMeeting that's available. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. For individual tutoring and live chat sessions online using GoToMeeting.com, here's our website. We're also on Skype. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.